K metoid clustering is a split up method that aims to partition a given data set into K clusters. It is similar to K means clustering but uses a different approach to determine cluster centers. While K means calculate the mean of the data point in each cluster to update cluster centers. Whereas K metoids uses the actual data points themselves as representatives of the clusters which are called metoids. So you can say the K means clustering algorithm uses centroids, whereas K metoids is an alternative clustering algorithm that uses metoid instead. So now you are curious to know what are these metoids. A metoid in a data set is a central point within a cluster, minimizing the sum of distances to the other points. Unlike K means, which is sensitive to outliers due to centroids, K metoids mitigates this by using metoids. It assigns each data point to a metoid, minimizing distances and iteratively updates metoids until convergence. So here is a quick info for you. If you want to switch careers in AI and ML, then try giving SimpleLearn's postgraduate program in AI and machine learning from Purdue University in collaboration with IBM. This course teaches in-demand skills such as machine learning, deep learning, NLP, computer vision, reinforcement learning, generative AI, prompt engineering, chat GPT, and many more. So don't forget to check out the course link from the description box and the pinned comment. So now let's discuss type of k metoid clustering. So there are primarily two types of k metoid clustering algorithm. The first one is split up around metoids, PAM. So PAM is the original and the most commonly used k metoid algorithm. They start by randomly selecting k data points as initial metoids. The second one is CLARA, C -L -A -R -A, clustering large application. So CLARA is designed to handle large data set efficiently. It samples subsets of the data multiple times, applies PAM to each subset to find representative metoids and then cluster the entire data set based on these metoids. So these two variants offer different trade-off in terms of computational complexity and scalability, making them suitable for different clustering scenarios, whereas PAM is preferred for smaller data set where accuracy is crucial, while CLARA is more suitable for large data set where computational efficiency is a priority. Moving forward, let's discuss a brief overview of k metoids algorithm. So first step is initialization. Randomly select k data point as initial method. The second one is assignment. Assign each data point to the closest metoid, typically based on some distance metric, that is Euclidean distance. The third one is update metoids. For each cluster, select the data point that minimizes the total dissimilarity to all other points in the cluster as a new metoid. The fourth one is repeat. Step 2 and step 3 until convergence, which occurs when the metoids are no longer changed. Advantages of K-metoids algorithms offers rapid convergence within a predefined number of steps. Its simplicity makes it straightforward to implement and comprehend. Additionally, it overcomes the constant associated with the K-means algorithms. Disadvantage of K-metoid algorithm is not optimal and may not be suitable for clustering non spherical group or objects. So this limitation arises from its heavy reliance on minimizing distance between non-metoid and metoid points. Furthermore, because of the initial selection of k-metoid is random, so the result may vary across runs on the same dataset. So moving forward, let's take an example and see how k-metoid algorithms work. So this is our table, dataset table for the k-metoid clustering. Right. So first step is we select k random data points from the data set and use them as the metoids. Okay. So now first let's uh, select the random data, right? Random data points. Okay. M1 and M2. Like two metoids we have to select M1 and M2. Okay. So if you will select, so these are our uh, randomly selected metoids. M1 like 3, 4. This 3, 4. And M2 is 7, 3. M2 is 7, 3, like the 6th and the 10th one. Okay, this is X coordinate and the Y coordinate, right? So now, so second step is now we will calculate the distance of each data points from the metoids. So you can use like any of the uh, formulas like Euclidean or Manhattan distance, right? So we mostly use Manhattan distance. So formula of Manhattan distance is X2 minus X1 plus Y2 minus Y1. Just remember that the value should be positive, not negative. If it is negative, make it as, as a positive, right? So this is our formula. This is M1, M2, the randomly selected metoid. This is our data set. So now, once we find the distance of each data point from the metoids, 
like each data point from the metoids using this formula x2 minus x1 plus y2 minus y1. So we will assign the data points to the cluster associated with each metoid, right? So the data points are assigned to the metoids at the closest distance. So we will check the distance, right? Okay. So fourth step is after determining the clusters, we will calculate the sum of the distance of all the non-metoid data points to the metoid to the each cluster. Okay, so it will cost, it will see as a cost. Okay, so now moving forward. So this is our iteration one, where we chose this M1, M2, like 3 or 4, 7, 3. Okay, so this is our Manhattan distance. So using this formula, we calculated these values, like 3, 4, 4, 5, 3, 3, 5, 4, right? Like X2 minus X1 plus Y2 minus Y1 using this, right? So these are our M1 and M2 values, okay? So now what we will do, we will assign these points to the clusters, right? This is our cluster one point, this is our cluster two point, right? So this is our distance of each data point from the metoids. So now we will assign these uh, data points to the cluster. So this is from cluster one, cluster one, cluster one, cluster two, cluster 2. So how we decide this cluster 1 and cluster 2, the data points are assigned to the medoids at the closest distance, okay, at the closest distance using this formula only, Manhattan distance formula, right. So now what we will do, we will find the cost and the cluster. First we will find the cluster, cluster 1 and cluster 2, then we will find the cost, right. So, so this is the cluster made with the medoids 3, 4, this 3, 4 and the 7, 3. So points in cluster 1 are 2, 6, 3, 8, this 2, 6, 3, 8, 4, 7, and 3, 4, and the points in cluster 2 are 7, 4, 6, 2, 6, 4, 7, 3, 8, 5. You can see here, cluster 1 means 2, 6, this 2, 6, 2, 6, 3, 8, this 3, 8, 4, 7, 4, 7, 3, 4, 3, 4, right? Like this. And same goes for the cluster 2. So after assigning the cluster, we will calculate the cost. So how we will calculate the cost? Using the same formula, this Manhattan distance, right? and the value must be in positive, okay? We will take this, this as a x2 and y2, okay, x1 and y1, we will calculate, the cost will come here, 3, right? So after assigning the cluster, we will calculate the cost for the each cluster and their sum. The cost is nothing but the sum of distances of the all points from the medoid, right? This cost, from medoid of the cluster they belong to, okay? So here the, the value, or you can say the cost is coming 22, so now, what we will do, we will select another non-medoid point, right? Okay, we will change one value from this, like either we can change 3, 4 or either we can change the 7, 3 value, right? So now we will select one another non-medoid point, okay? So here we have selected 7, 4, right? As you can see previously, we have 7, 3, okay? Here we have 7, 4. So now we will go the same process finding M1 distance, M2 distance, assigning the clusters, and the points and the cost, right? So, so here the cost is coming, okay? We will go through the same process. Here the cost is coming 20, okay? So fun fact is that the cluster after this iteration, okay? So that iteration was iteration one, as you can see here, iteration two, right? So the cluster after this iteration will be clustered are like two, six, three, eight, four, seven, three, four. Okay, 7, 4, 6, 2, 6, 4, 7, 3, 8, 5, and 7, 6. So the medoids are 3, 4, this 3, 4, and 7, 4. We keep replacing the medoids with the non medoid data points. The set of medoids for each cost is the least. Whichever is the least, we will take those medoids, right? So here we have the cost is 22. So now we have cost 20. So we will take 20 right, the cost 20, and the associated cluster are made permanent. So after all the iteration, you will get the final cluster and their medoids, okay. So these are our final clusters, okay, 2, 6, 3, 8, 4, 7, 3, 4, and the cluster 2 are 7, 4, 6, 2, 6, 4, 7, 3, 8, 5, 7, 6, and the medoids are 3, 4, and the 7, 4, okay. So these are our final cluster and the, their medoids. So the k medoid clustering algorithm is a computation intensive algorithm that requires many iteration, okay, it goes like, n number of times, it can go n number of times. So, so in each iteration, we need to calculate the distance between the medoids 
these distance between nematodes and assign them to the clusters right okay we have to find the distance and the data points then we have to assign the cluster and compute the cost okay so hence k metoids clustering is not well suited for the large data set that is why it's not suited for so this is how you can find the clusters and the cost so overall k metoid is a valuable clustering technique especially when dealing with the data that may have noise or outliers and when it's important to interpret cluster using actual data points so we have come to end of this video if you have any question regarding this video please feel free to ask in the comment section below our team of expert will help you soon as possible thank you for watching stay safe and keep learning hi there if you like this video subscribe to the simply learn youtube channel and click here to watch similar videos to nerd up and get certified click here